The district attorney who covered up the crime, she got arrested as well. She got indicted for the cover up because that's exactly what she did. Now she's claiming innocence saying, "Oh no, 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 this is all just a big coincidence." Well, now investigators have exposed the fact that they exchanged, I'm talking about Mr. McMichael, one of the murderers, and the district attorney literally exchanged various messages and conversations after the murder, after the murder. Let me remind you of what happened in Georgia on that day. Yes. That's, that's called a murder, okay? A young black male. Let's put up the picture of Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William Bryan. Let's put their picture up. See, those are thugs and criminals. Those are gangsters, all right? Crips and Bloods ain't got nothing on those guys. They are the real scourge of the earth. But they are helped. Is really a kingpin. This woman, Jackie Johnson, is at the top of it. She was the district attorney at the time of this murder. She decided to cover up the murder, tell the cops not to arrest, and then engage in lengthy conversations with one of the killers, her dear friend, Gregory McMichael. Gregory McMichael and his son, Travis McMichael, armed themselves with guns and used a pickup truck to chase 25 year old Aubrey. After spotting him running in their neighborhood just outside the port city of Brunswick, Georgia. A neighbor, William Roddy Bryan joined the pursuit in his own truck and recorded the cell phone video of Travis McMichael killing Aubrey at close range with a shotgun. Now remember at trial it came out that if Travis McMichael had not completed the job. His dad, Gregory McMichael, was going to kill Aubrey anyway. They came out during the trial, okay? The men told police that Travis McMichael opened fire in self defense as Aubrey threw punches and tried to grab the shotgun, just trying to get away. The McMichaels told police they suspected Aubrey of being a thief. Aubrey was unarmed and he, when he was killed, and police found no evidence that he had stolen anything. One of the men convicted of murder in the street chase and the fatal shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey spoke with his former boss. Who's the former boss? The district attorney, Jackie Johnson, okay? They spoke several times by phone in the days and weeks after the killing in 2020. That's according to a court document filed on Thursday, all right? What were they talking about? How does the DA get phone calls and engage in conversations with a man who just committed murder? What do you think they're saying to each other? Oh, you, you think they're just you know, talking about going out to lunch? You think they're talking about um, news of the day? Or do you think they're talking about how to make sure the murder remains covered up? There's more investigators found that the day after the shooting, then Brunswick Judicial Circuit Attorney Jackie Johnson placed a phone call to Greg McMichael. She initiated the call. A retired investigator from her office who initiated the deadly pursuit of Aubrey. The call lasted more than nine minutes. Prosecutor said in a misconduct case against Johnson said in the legal filing. It listed 16 calls, I want you to get this now. 16 calls between phone numbers for Johnson and McMichael starting February 23rd, 2020. When McMichael left Johnson a voicemail about an hour after the shooting and ending May 5th, 2020, the day graphic cell phone video of Aubrey's killing leaked online. The video sparked 
a national outcry over the young black man's death at the hands of three white pursuers. Now I want to remind you of some context here. Initially, the DA told the cops, don't affect an arrest, let them go. It was self defense, they do so. Later, when local media started covering this, the DA decided to transfer it to a friend of hers in another jurisdiction. That other DA decided to write a letter saying that his office has investigated and they have determined <laughs> that it is actually self defense, okay? That DA has yet to be charged with anything. It was a complete lie. There was no self defense here, it was murder. All right. Um, more than half the calls lasted just a few seconds to a minute, suggesting some may have gone unanswered and others involved voicemails. Seven calls lasted just shy of three minutes to 21 minutes, according to court records. A grand jury indicted the district attorney Johnson last year on a felony charge of violating her oath of office, as well as a misdemeanor count of hindering a police investigation. Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr's office is prosecuting the case, which alleges Johnson used her position to protect McMichael and his son. The evidence shows that Johnson showed favor and affection for McMichael throughout the pendency of the case, including when she was making decisions as the DA over the case, the prosecutor's legal filing said, okay? All right, now I gotta remind everybody, this is not abnormal, this is normative in jurisdictions like Brunswick, Georgia. Do you know how many times she's done this before? We uncovered a case a few years ago where she covered up a crime for another cop. So she was known in that jurisdiction for covering up crimes for cops. The grand jury, when they got out of the grand jury room from this covered up crime that happened a few years ago, they said, wait a minute, the DA lied to us. She didn't give us that information. That's the only reason we never indicted the cop. They didn't give us the proper information. Now we have more information and we would have indicted that cop based on the truth of the narrative rather than based on what the DA gave us. She already covered for a cop. Criminal justice system is not broken, it's working exactly as it was designed to work. Our job is to break the damn thing, not fix it. All right. Professor Hammond, your thoughts on this? You know, another vivid example of the personhood of black people not being afforded the political and legal codification that human beings should be afforded. That, you know, this, as you say, it needs to stop and it creates these perverse incentives. It, it allows for uh, people to uh, commit murder with, with, without recourse. Uh, because there's not that they they do it without the fear that they will be uh, dealt with accordingly, and and this is a problem. And it's normal for them to operate in this manner. 